Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. And today, I want to talk about my favorite new feature of the most recent update of 10.4.2 that came out about last week at the time of this video. Now, Logic 10 has been out, I think, for about five-ish years now. And ever since its release, we have had reliable, consistent updates every year. And those updates have just been huge. I mean, everything from UI to workflow to tempo to drummers, plugins, it's been amazing. And 10.4.2 is killing it. Now, of course, there are plenty of blog posts, videos, and courses that dig into this new update. I'm not going to beat a dead horse, but I just want to dig into my favorite new feature and how it relates to my workflow, and that is sends on faders, specifically how it relates to headphone mixes. Now, if you're not familiar with sends, buses, or auxes, no problem. I've included a link down below that you can check out, and that'll break down and explain in great detail how to use sends, buses, and auxes. But I just want to dig right into this. If we go into the mixer, you may or may not see in the mixer header this new feature called sends on faders. And the reason I say you may or may not is seems to be dependent on the size of your screen for your computer. For example, my MacBook has a 13 inch screen, so I don't see it on my MacBook, but on this larger screen, I do have the option contained within the header. If you don't see sends on faders up here, just click on one of your buses here that you have instantiated, and right at the bottom of that menu is sends on faders. Select it, and suddenly, bus one for every track that bus one exists on turns yellow and the faders turn yellow as well. And if we go to this track here and we remove bus one, suddenly the fader disappears for that particular track, which is really awesome because you can work on sends on faders without having to instantiate it on a per track basis. You just have to choose really on a per bus basis. So now we've set it for bus two. Okay, so what is sends on faders? We're all pretty used to having to adjust sends with this round dial next to the send field here. And that's worked pretty well for all this time. It's not immediately intuitive. It doesn't make a lot of sense when you first look at it, but we all got used to it. But what's awesome about sends on faders is now we can use the fader itself in the channel strip to adjust the send level. And you can see that I'm boosting it up here as well. It's fantastic because it's more intuitive and we have higher resolution with the fader on the channel strip. But this extends even further past just faders and send levels. We also can change the panning of a track and how it's sending to one of our auxes. It's fantastic. So to do that, click on that same send field that you have sends on faders enabled. And we now have an option called independent pan. So let me turn off sends on faders. You can see here I have a guitar track. If I hard pan it to the left, and then turn sends on faders back on, we see that we have a pan dial on this particular track because it's the only one where I have independent pan enabled. I can adjust the panning of how this track will send to this reverb over here. So this reverb, I'm gonna have my track panned hard right. It's kind of hard to explain, we'll take a listen. So I'm gonna solo this guitar track, take a listen to how it sounds right now. Clearly, the guitar is hard pan to the left. Now let's turn on these sends. Enable sends on faders. Now I'm going to turn the send level all the way up, all the way up so we can really hear this. We're going to hear the guitar track hard pan to the left, and we're going to hear the guitar reverb hard pan to the right. Check it out. Which is amazing. Panning with sends has always been kind of a rough spot for Logic. Now having this independent pan within sends on faders just makes it so much easier. Okay, that's the bare bones of it. Why I'm stoked is now creating a headphone mix for a musician doesn't have to be the biggest pain in the world. And I say that now because I would never talk badly about Logic on video. Now that we have this update, I'm gonna kind of retroactively say it was a real pain. I didn't like creating headphone mixes. In fact, so much so that if a musician said, hey, can I get more of this or more of that? Yeah, that's fine. But if we have three musicians who are each asking for an independent headphone mix, I would just say, 
Yeah, I actually don't have that ability with logic, unfortunately. I'll try to create the best mix I can for all three of you. We'll have to compromise a little. I know that's a little lazy, but frankly, it was too much of a pain. Let's go back to the old way of doing things. So I'm going to select all my tracks in my mixer. And to create a headphone mix, I would select the next open field, select the next bus, which is bus 3. I would want to make sure that bus 3 was set to pre-fader because I don't want me adjusting the faders here to impact what's going on here. And then bus 3 sends to a new aux channel over here that was created, and we would have to set the output for that aux channel to headphone 1, headphone 2, or some separate line out. Kind of convoluted. And then from here, each track is set to zero. So now I have to adjust the level for every single track in the session for this particular musician. This is like thousands of steps. I don't want to commit to thousands of steps. Sorry, musician. I'm lying to you. I apologize. But now we don't have to lie to our musicians and we can give everybody the headphone mix they need very quickly. If we select all those tracks that the headphone bus was supposed to be sending to, we no longer have to send to a bus and then to an aux channel and then set the headphone output for that aux channel. Instead, we can just go to output within the send options and select that headphone output specifically. So now bus three is being sent specifically to the headphone output. Perfect. Now what's even better is I don't have to set the level of each independent send for each track for that musician. Instead, with everything selected, and we click on any one of the headphone output buses, we can go down to copy fader to send. So now the send levels are identical to my fader levels. That's amazing. So you can see here is negative 0.8, right here, negative 0.8. Well, I've adjusted it a little, but you can see that it's been adjusted. So we immediately start with a headphone mix with all the correct fader levels. And then if I need to adjust for this specific organ, I can adjust that for this specific arpeggiator, I can. If someone wants more of themselves, less of other things, it's not a problem. And in fact, we can select everything again, turn on sends on faders, create independent pan for everything as well for that particular musician. I, I just love it. This has saved all of us thousands of steps and so much pain and suffering with headphone mixes. It's amazing. That is what I'm most excited about with 10.4.2. Other things I'm excited by with the most recent update of Logic, how about drag and drop with Alchemy? I'm so excited that Logic is jumping on board with drag and drop. Also, Smart Tempo can now analyze multi-mic situations or more than one track at a time and MIDI. That's fantastic. Now you can play your MIDI keys and it will analyze the tempo that you're playing at. Or if you have a multi-mic drum set or some other situation, it will analyze all those tracks while you're recording and create a custom beat map. I'm so thankful for this. In fact, if anybody from the Logic team at Apple happens to be watching this, thank you so much for everything you're doing to make this the best DAW it can be. As always, I hope this was helpful to you. If it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week, I'm creating videos, posts, emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.